Hi everybody, Nicole from Mom Trends here, and we've been doing some social media videos and they've been really popular, so we're gonna give you more of that. Um, specifically today, we're talking about Twitter, the sins and successes of my favorite social media tool. So we're gonna give you 10 tips today and we are kicking it off with the low-hanging fruit. Number one tip, do not tweet about the weather or what you are eating. The various exceptions for this are if you are a weatherman or if you are a chef, you are allowed to tweet about those things. Otherwise, no one cares. No one wants to hear that it is hot in New York City in August. We know that already. And they don't want to hear about the bacon that you have been ingesting in the morning. So avoid these kind of inane conversations. Don't do it. Now we're gonna sprinkle in some positives. Number two, do use a hashtag. So whatever you're tweeting about, you wanna find other people that might be interested or they're talking about the same thing. So a hashtag is simply the number sign and then a word or a bunch of words that go together. So when we do events, we use hashtags. For instance, we're doing an event with the festive holiday hashtag. Thereby, people who are all at the event can be joining in conversations together. People who are following along at home can jump in as well. You get the idea. Hashtags are where people can find like-minded individuals on Twitter, so be sure you are using them. Number three, so yes, retweeting is a wonderful, wonderful thing, but don't just retweet automatically the people who you like. Make sure that it makes sense and that it is also interspersed with organic original tweets. If you're only tweeting automatically and automated, nobody's going to realize that you have a personality, you have something unique to share, and they're probably not gonna to want to follow you. Number four, definitely use the favorite star. This star is going to keep a list. So say you're out and about and you see a great tweet with the link and you don't necessarily have time to go back and read that link and dive in deep and see if it's something maybe you wanna follow or something you wanna follow up on, hit the star bar and then when you have a little bit more time, you can go back to your own profile and look at your favorites. I like to do this to see if there's people uh, mentioned in a tweet that I should be following when I have time to look up and see what they're all about. So definitely use Use that favorite bar as a little research tool and it will lead you to some great things. Number five, keep your follower to tweet ratio in line. What does this mean? So followers, how many people are following you? Tweets, how many original tweets you've been putting out there? If you're just getting up and running and you don't have that many followers but you have a lot to say, okay, you're gonna have a little bit out of whack relationship, but also maybe you're putting too much out there and you're not tweeting judiciously. So definitely keep an eye on your follower to tweet ratio. Number six, Twitter is like a cocktail party. You don't wanna be the bore that is only talking about themselves, their interests, what they have going on in the center of the room. Have you ever noticed at a cocktail party that people just flock away from them? But then people who are good listeners, people who are engaging, those are the people you wanna hang out with at a cocktail party. So, how do you do that on Twitter? Well, you can reply to somebody that had a really great tweet, maybe it's a cool picture, or maybe they did a haiku that just blew you off, off of your feet. Reply to them, say, nice job, nice work, or I like that restaurant too. Um, but remember, this is a give and take. It's not just about you pushing out information that you wanna get out there, it's also about complimenting those that are also out there providing great information. So make sure that you give and take, and definitely hit that reply button as often as you can. Number seven is gonna be your profile page. And this one I actually read in More Magazine recently. They had uh, some information about how people are using Twitter as a sort of backup resume. And you should consider this very, uh, very true whether you're a brand or a person. Look at your bio. I know you don't get a lot of information there, but make sure that it says the right things about you. And by all means, don't use the egg picture. Nobody's gonna follow, wanna follow the egg. So make sure you have a fun picture and you're using that in your profile. And then use the, those characters that you have available to say a little bit about you to make it interesting, engaging, and to also share what you're gonna be tweeting about because then you'll be a lot more likely to get real followers. Number eight, it's time to talk about links. Um, links are when you're pushing people in a certain direction. You want them to go read something, do something, act upon something. And remember when we were talking about that cocktail party analogy a little bit earlier? Well, here's the thing. Of course you have Twitter because, not just because you want to get a lot of followers because you're running for president, though maybe you do, but usually you're trying to engage people to do something like-minded that you're interested in. 
So with links, I like to have a ratio of about one link for every three tweets. So that means I have two organic replying conversational tweets and then a third link, which is sort of a call to action. It could be telling people about a sale, it could be telling people about a great blog post on mom trends. But again, it's gonna be about me. The link's usually in something I want them to do. That's why I want it to balance out with two other things. So especially when your business just getting up and running, don't make it always about me, me, me. You want it to also be about the community that's out there in Twitter. And believe me, you'll be a lot more successful. Okay, number nine, we've got to talk about it. It is Twitter, it's buying followers. Where do I stand on this? I don't really believe in buying followers. I guess if you're a business and you're just getting online and you really want to have a splashy holiday season and you want to have tens of thousands of followers, but let me tell you, a lot of times when you're buying followers, there's these, they're autobots or they're people who really don't want to engage with your brand. So it's usually not a great investment. It might look splashy, but it's better to go organic and hire a great team of people who can be tweeting for you, who can be looking for people to engage. That's definitely a better way to go. So we just hit 36,000 Twitter followers. Hopefully this number is even bigger by the time you're seeing this video. And we haven't paid for a single one. Now it's taken me probably four years to get to that number, but they're organic and they're great followers. I love interacting with them. I love hearing about what they have going on. And I think if you take the time to build your audience properly, it's gonna be a much better investment than just paying for followers. My last tip, number 10, is to link everything that you possibly have going on. Make sure that your website, every single post that you have has a tweet this button so you can make it easier for your readers to tweet out your material. Make sure that your pages, um, your profiles, be it on Facebook and also on Pinterest and on Google+, that everything has your Twitter hashtag, uh, your Twitter profile on it as well so people can find you in all the great places that you already are succeeding so they can know that you're also on Twitter. Make sure that you are also automating as much as you can when it comes to your blog post. If you do have a new blog post and you are a great frequent tweeter um, like I am, all of my blog posts are pushed automatically to Twitter. They know that I'm on there all day tweeting already. So the blog posts come up there and it's one less thing that I have to do so I can get to the business of great organic tweets. There you have it. These are my 10 best Twitter tips. Again, I've hit 36,000 followers without paying for a single one. So I hope that you'll find some of these tips useful as you're engaging in social media. If you have a question, and I know there's gotta be questions about how to use Twitter, be sure to leave it in a comment and I'll try to address it. And if there's ideas for upcoming social media segments that you'd like to see, please let us know and we'll try to address those as well. And be sure to subscribe. There's a lot of fabulous things going on and we don't want you to miss a single one.